Imagine you went to school for four years to get a computer science degree. You graduate, then you get a job at a consulting firm for a software engineering position. You're on that job for four months, you're doing a great job, then all of a sudden you get to notice that you're being laid off. Now, you work to get a new job. You literally submit hundreds and hundreds of resumes and you're getting little to no callbacks. You're in a conundrum because you gotta figure out how do I keep the lights on, get some form of money generating job, and at the same time, you feel as though, okay, if these recruiters aren't calling me back, there may be a skills gap. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how I would go from being a software engineer, junior software engineer, from being laid off to trying to pivot and transition into something else in a rough job market. Now, if you're new here, I'm Greg, the creator of Thoughtful Techie Cloud, and each week I create a video to help you navigate your AWS cloud and tech journey. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe right now. Okay, so you have that computer science degree, so you're already coming in with a strong technical background, but recruiters aren't calling you back. One thing that you might have working against you is that you are in a junior role, and there's a lot of recruiters right now looking for more senior roles. The other thing which you may not have taken into account is that you're also in competition not only with other software engineers, but also AI. Not to mention, you got laid off, which means other people probably got laid off as well, including people that may have five, 10, or even more years of experience. So now you are competing against a huge talent pool and it's gonna be very tough. So if you're not getting callbacks, don't take it personal. It's just a lot of great talent out there and the jobs are just shrinking. But I'm gonna help you work through how to rise above what I call that level of obscurity and give yourself more visibility. Now, if you haven't got many callbacks, we wanna troubleshoot and take a look at uh, a few things. The first thing is, what is the resume looking like, right? Take a look at the jobs that you've been applying to and then figure out, are there some skills that those jobs were asking for and be honest with yourself and say, actually, you know what? Uh, I'm seeing a trend in these two to three skills and I don't have these on my resume, okay? And then take a look at going after those. The other thing is, yes, you could go after another software engineering role, but keep in mind, if you've been at this for a while and nothing is happening, you're gonna have to change something up because uh, you just can't go indefinitely waiting and keeping your fingers crossed that somebody's gonna hire you. So what, you, what can you do? All right, so you can take that great software engineering background and there's a few different avenues that you could go. I'm gonna give you a couple that you could consider. So if you are lacking cloud skills, one of the next things to figure out is how can I take my software engineering background and then combine that with some cloud skills, for example. So uh, I definitely recommend AWS. So there's two certifications that I would suggest just as a, at a foundational level to get your cloud knowledge, I would say, at a, at a great starter baseline. So that's gonna be the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner. That's a foundational AWS certification, requires no technical background, that teaches you uh, the basics and fundamentals of AWS. Once you've gotten that up under your belt, I suggest moving on to the AWS Solutions Architect Associate. This is gonna be uh, beyond the uh, a fundamental level, gets you at uh, the associate level, which would teach you uh, well-architected best practices on AWS. This is gonna be highly advantageous for you with that software engineering, engineering background. So this is gonna cover things on AWS such as how to build cost optimized, operationally excellent, reliable, uh, performant, and uh, sustainable architectures and secure architectures on the AWS cloud. So uh, after that, 
that gives you your nice baseline. What are some of the roles that you could combine with your software engineering skills and your cloud background? One of the ways, uh, things that you could do is considered a cloud support engineer role. So you're already technical, right? You could go the support route. So let's say you don't want to be directly uh, customer facing where you're like, you know, going in front of meetings and traveling to go visit customers. But maybe you want to be a, maybe you want to work with customers, but be a little bit more behind the scenes. You could do something like a cloud support engineer role. So let's say if you wanted to do something like that at AWS, you would pick uh, a certain product or service that you would align to. Then you would be taking inbound calls and or tickets. You would be aligned to a queue and then you would be within a certain domain of expertise within that role. And then you're going to become really good with that over time. Now, from that cloud support engineer role, the pathway is that you could evolve into uh, a more complex or more responsibility role in the future based on that cloud support engineer background in which you could go into a technical account manager role. Now, a technical account manager role is going to be uh, it's going to be a support role, but you're not just going to be working off of tickets. Now you're going to directly have uh, a customer. It could be one customer if it's a very huge enterprise customer. Or you could have, you know, a handful of customers, maybe two to four, something like that, where now you are there, go to support contact, not just when something breaks, but you're also working proactively to make sure that uh, everything in operations is looking good and keeping their, their architecture stable. Another position that you could do as you learn more with cloud skills and combine with your software engineering background, you could decide, you know what? Maybe I'll take a look at that solutions architecture role. Now, I've been a solution architect for many years at AWS. And essentially what a solution architect does is you work with uh, a business, which are your customers. You learn what business outcomes that they're looking to achieve. Then you work backwards from there to figure out, OK, what is the underlying architecture, products, services and best practices? that we need to put together to help that business deliver their business outcome. Now, a solution architect would need to be deeply technical as well as have business skills and a lot of people skills and a very high degree of being able to communicate at a high level. So you could be talking to other software engineers and you could also be talking to CTOs, CEOs and that whole C-suite. Now, let's back up to your software engineering background. Uh, in any of these roles that I mentioned, support engineer or technical account manager or solution architect, your software engineering background is going to be very vital because guess what? Chances are you're going to be interacting with other software engineers and developers. So you've been down there in the trenches. You know what it feels like. You know what it feels like to, you know, to uh, do CI CD pipelines deploy code, all that type of stuff. So your ability to relate, be empathetic, and uh, be able to help guide a software engineer or a dev team into the cloud or into the best practices is going to be extremely great. Something else I wanted to tell you about is something called what I call the skills stack. Now, keep in mind, Let's say you're in a situation where you've sent a ton of resumes, you're not getting a lot of callbacks. You got to troubleshoot like I was saying earlier about why that is. So the good thing about having submitted a lot of jobs is that you've read a lot of job descriptions, you've read a lot of job requirements, and you're going to start seeing trends form. One of the number one areas that you want to take a look at is what are the employers asking for? and then match that to the skills you're bringing to the table and then be honest with yourself to say, you know what, I got some skills gaps here, right? So if you've been deep into software engineering and you realize, okay, I don't have much cloud, uh, I haven't really deployed much to production, then those are the areas that we have to address, which is, again, I was saying the AWS cloud practitioner is gonna help you out big time and solutions architect associate. At the same rate, I don't want you to get stuck and just think or have the misconception that you get a certification and then after you put that on your resume, wham, 
all of a sudden recruiters are going to start throwing themselves at you because that typically doesn't happen. While you're getting that theoretical knowledge and while you're working on those couple of certs that I mentioned, you also want to make sure that you're gaining hands-on experience. This can be through doing labs and or cloud projects. If you uh, would like for me to give you a recommendation of a place where you can go, you can check out AWS Skill Builder. Okay, they have a number of different training programs. They also have uh, builder labs, which are hands-on labs that you can do in a real AWS environment that spin up for you and then you can solve a particular problem. This is a great area for you to start. Now, I've given you a lot of information here and the last thing I wanna give you that's important, which a lot of people skip. Okay, so you're gaining all these certifications, you're getting the hands-on skills, but there's one area which is missing. And that area is we got to know, we, we have to come up with a way of how people know you. So there's a saying about uh, it's not what you know, it's who you know. I would extend that a little bit further and say it's not, it's not only is it who you know, but it's who knows you. And what we need to do here is uh, while you are going on the search, what I recommend, and this, this is not going to be instant gratification, this is going to be something that um, you're going to need to invest some time in, you need to become more visible. How can you do that? Well, one of the ways you can do it, you can show up physically at conferences and stuff like that, but you can't go to conferences every day. But something you can do every day is you can increase your presence online. Let me ask you a question. Where do you think most of the recruiters live? One of the areas that they live and they can see you is LinkedIn. So you could literally carry people on your learning journey, right? You could talk about what you're learning, do posts on that, videos on that, teach people what you're learning, uh, demonstrate some of your projects, uh, write a blog on something that you've created, post this on a LinkedIn, for example. Videos, you could do screen shares and walk people through your GitHub repo, your technical portfolio, do these videos, put this on YouTube, and just try to figure out how to lift yourself up from uh, the unknown to the known. So these are some areas that uh, I would recommend for you. I've given you some, some areas at a high level. If you wanna get more specific based on your background, I am now doing one-on-one -on -one mentorship sessions. I have a link in the description below and feel free to sign up for one of my one-on-ones where we'll sit down together on a call. You can walk me through your background and some of the constraints that you're under, and then I can take all of my years of experience, all of my insights, and we can come up with next steps forward for your own situation. So if you're tired of guessing around and trying to figure out, you know what, should I do this, should I do that, Bounce off what you're thinking with, with an expert. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.